Hello everyone, this is Lan from Lovelo Digital. Thanks for joining today's session. Today we will be discussing how we build a feature warehouse with a reliable and reusable feature repository to accelerate our model development. Before I start, I would like to introduce our team. There are five teams under the data science group. The business intelligence team focuses on curating and labeling the data, cleaning it for mass consumptions, and empowering business users to extract the value from it. Platform team builds low latency, high availability, availability ingestion pipelines, and maintains a robust cloud native data platform. There are three DS core teams. The shopping experience team builds personalized and recommendation services to deliver an engaging omnichannel digital experience. Ops and forecasting teams develop forecasting models for inventory availability, labor, and uh, other derivatives of demand. And the growth and the marketing team supports, supports the initiatives to maximize customer engagement while optimizing the number of dollar, dollars spent on marketing and advertising. Loblaw Digital is equivalent to the department in Loblaw Company Limited, which focuses on the digital experience. We have businesses on um, PC Experience Online Grocery, cross 16 banners, such as Fortino, Loblaws, and Nofras. Customers could also place orders on Marketplace for a wider range of products and vendors. On um, Shoppers Drug Mart, we have online beauty and digital pharmacy services. We also provide online service for Joe Fresh, which is a high fashion brand. Last but not least, we have Canada's favorite loyalty program, PC Optima. Therefore, we have a large amount of transactional data across millions of products and thousands of stores. We could also get data from customer email and website behaviors. One of the most important customer data is the loyalty data, which collected from the PC Optimum program. With this rich data source, we could make a lot of data-driven decisions. First of all, we, we are proud that we offer our customers a fully personalized shopping environment. We have personalized email recommendation, personalized web search, and personalized substitution for out-of-stock items. Second, we build models to target our customers with promotional content. We leverage the large amount of data to drive forecasting, predicting, and optimization solutions. Moreover, we implement dashboards to support business analysis and the decision making. In addition, we have so many more in progress and upcoming projects. However, we cannot ignore the difficulties we met when we wanted to leverage our data. We used to use ETO pipelines to build our data warehouse. We load, data in, we load the source data into memory, transform source data as required, and repeat the steps one and two several times before loading them to our data warehouse. The limitation of extract tra transformation load is with more and more data need to be ingested. Data engineers need to pay more effort to maintain these flows. And during the processes, they might need to face more legacy and scalability issues. As for data analysts and data scientists, there are gaps between data and the features. To manipulate the raw, raw data and transform them into useful features, data analysts and data scientists would have to conduct, conduct time-consuming and repeating tasks to understand the business logic within and between data components and generate the desired features. Every data user would pay a lot of effort into data discovery. We might lose governance, such as for the personal, personal identifiable information, the governance for it, for PI data. Besides, as a lack of the uniform the standard metrics, features created by different individuals or teams may not be consistent and cannot be reused. To address data users' pain points, we need to identify a solution that fulfills three requirements. First of all, we need a single and a consolidated repository to control all our data models and apply tests and checks on the top of the data models to ensure the data quality. Second, we need a coordinator 
to schedule pipelines with robust integration. We wish we could run our tasks with arbitrary clusters and it could be easy to apply to our current infrastructure. And in the future, if there are next generation technologies, it will also be easy to extend. Last, we want to have communications between the data pipelines and the model pipelines, so we could guarantee the data quality before we use it. As a result, we propose that to use DBT and Apache Airflow as a solution. In the next few minutes, I will introduce how the two tools solve our problem. Considering we will have more and more data loaded to our data warehouse, in the traditional ETL pipeline, we need to repeat the extract and the transformation steps multiple times until it could be finally loaded to our data warehouse. Record the issues faced by our data engineers. One source update, we might need to change the transformation logic for all downstream users. We need to pay more attention to maintaining the pipelines. And also, we must face a lot of legacy issue. However, nowadays, data storage is not as expensive as before. The data warehouse like Redshift, BigQuery are extremely performant and scalable to handle data transformation in database rather than some external processing layer. Therefore, we decided to transit from ETL to EOT, extract and load as much as we can, and do the transformation in the destination data warehouse. We use DBT as a source controller of the transformation processes. So DBT, the data building tool, is a tool that does the transformation jobs in ELT processes. It doesn't extract or load data, but it's extremely good at transforming data that's already loaded into our data warehouse. A DBT project always consists with SQL and the YAML file. The SQL file defines the data model. It looks just like the general query. Each model contains a single select, uh, select statement for the transformation, while the YAML file defines the documentation and the test for source data and the data models. We can add a description and test of the table and the columns. In this example, we add the descriptions for our table product information and also add the description for every column. And for the product ID, we also apply the non check for the column. We will use an example to show how convenient to build a three layer, three layers data model with DBT. Assuming we are aiming to build profiles for every customer, our primary source data is transactions, including the customer ID, order ID, store ID, purchase date, weekend date, and item price and the quantity. To ensure this, to enrich this table, we have one product information table with the product ID and their category. And for the store information, we use one store information to enrich it. We have, we have the table with the city, province, banner, three columns. And the data model in the second the vertical layer, two of them are aggregated from the transaction to get the customer weekly summary. And the, the last one is to find the most frequent store for every customer. The final output would be the summary for customer with their most frequently shopped city, in-store and online short-term and long-term spend, and also lifelong spend on four indicating categories, spend on meat, bakery, daily, and seafood. One of my favorite features of DBT is it provides several methods for people to visualize their documentation. We, we decided to publish our documentation to Netlify, which enables auto-generation of documentation and provides us us with a way to create a descriptions of fields and the tables. These features significantly reduce our time on data discovery. We do not need to ask for help from the universe anymore. And this is the main page of our DBT documentation. The project tab on the left mirrors the structure of the DBT repository, and the, the database tab on the right looks more like a database explorer indicates the actual location and the relations of the table and the views.
we could also search on the web page with several filters. So in the like BigQuery, if you want to dig a term, you could get the list of tables and data sets if the words inside the name. However, with the BT Netlify app, we could search with uh, search with more than just names. We could search if this term is in, in the description column, query, text. See here is the search result of if I search TMLS with a description filter. And I could also search if there are any queries containing the TMLS. There is still a surprise waiting for us if we get a closer look at the table. We use the transaction table as our example. The visualization covers very detailed table, met table metadata, such as the owner type, source, number of rows, and the table size. And if we scroll down, we could get the description of the table and the field. Even better, we could get the list of models to use this table as a reference. So we could have an evident idea of what would be the impact when we change the table. The other cool thing is DBT could visualize dependency flow with directed axelic graph. It could build the dependency diagram for every table and the view. In this page, it shows the relationship of the transaction table. The purple red node is the current node, is the current node for the transaction table. We could find that there are three data models to use it. The home slow city, weekly category spend, and the weekly order summary. And this dependency graph for the final output is the customer profile table. We could utilize that the diagram to figure out the source tables and the registry reusable mid-layer views. Why is DBT suitable for feature engineering? First of all, our time cost on data discovery has largely been reduced. We could quickly know who to ask more questions and where to find the data, and also clear uh, relation between tons of data components and the concrete idea of how much impact it would make if we change one of them. Second, it could act as a source controller to maintain all the data logic in our repository and also records the audit logs and the jobs that have been run. Third, we could apply tests and checks of our data, except for some like the syntax checks. We could also do the test for the row-wise, column-wise, and table-wise. For example, we could do a freshness check for daily updated data to say if the volume loaded is in the safe range. Therefore, we could guarantee our data use the, is the guarantee the consistency, accuracy, and the reliability of the data we are going to use. By default, DBT would materialize data model as views. Views are on the top of the source data, will always have the latest record. The data logic will be reused or referred to by other models. For the data needs to be fast to query or have multiple consumers, we suggest materializing them to tables. DBT also supports incremental materialization to update or append on the existing table. With these features, we could significantly avoid the redundancy of our data transformation. Then I will move to the second tool we used to build our platform, Apache Airflow. Airflow is an open source orchestration platform to schedule and monitor workflows. There are four main principles of Airflow. The first one is scalable. Airflow has modular architecture to use uh, and uses a uh, message queue to orchestrate an arbitrary number of workers. It's ready to scale with tons of tasks. Also, with cross communication and the subdex, it could support the dynamic pipeline generation. Third, there are detailed instructions to guide Airflow users to use it to easily define operators and, and extend the libraries to fit the level of uh, the abstraction that is suited in any environment. Last, all the pipelines are lean and explicit. It uses the powerful Jinja templating engine to build the, the parameterization elegantly.
Here we would like to show how we build our machine learning pipeline with Airflow. This is a very generic machine learning pipeline. We load the data from the data warehouse, transform them to desired features, train the models, generate future, future predictions, and then store the prediction back to storage. In this example, we implemented the Airflow pipeline on the top of several uh, Google Cloud Platform components. The data source the data source in the GCP BigQuery. So at the beginning, we would load the data from BigQuery with two BigQuery operators for both the training set and testing set. Considering that the data volume and the, the training speed, we decided to, to train our model with Spark. So we have the create a data pro cluster task to create a new data pro cluster for this pipeline. The Spark job focuses on training the models and the generating predictions. And at the end of the task, we store the forecast to GCS bucket. Up to now, the mission of the data pro cluster is over. So we have a task to delete it. The last step is to ingest the prediction file to be queried. It's pretty straightforward. In the DAG, one block is one task. Each task is the implementation of an operator. So for example, the last GCS to be code task you, you we use the Google Cloud storage to BigQuery operator to execute a BigQuery load job. To communicate within the DAG, tasks could use the shared DAG arguments. Besides, Airflow supports a feature for operators with cross communication called XCOM. XCOM lets tasks or sub DAGs to pull or push messages, allowing more dynamic control and a shared state. To build a cross stack dependency, we could use the external task sensor operator. The requirements of using this operator is that should be in the same schedule and execution date. And for more complicated scenarios, such as one of streaming jobs is dependent by multiple downstream jobs, we could also share information by message. Once the dependent job is done, it could publish a message to a pop sub topic and the subscriber could trigger could be triggered the the subscriber could trigger the downstream pipelines. So how we use Airflow to orchestrate DBT jobs? We usually use our Airflow to, to schedule job jobs early, daily, weekly, and for the ad hoc jobs to do the test testing or monitor. We inside inside the DB, uh, DBT DAG, we usually initialize Kubernetes pods to run DBT jobs. And for the downstream jobs, depending on the data, we use PopSoft to trigger them. With this combo, we could achieve the communication between the data pipeline and the model pipeline. So before the solution was proposed, the downstream model pipeline would start working with the assumption that the data is ready to use. But for the unexpected data issues, it will not be notified. But for now, the model pipeline could keep asking the status of the data jobs and could be triggered by the data status or other dependencies on the jobs to ensure the data quality before making any decisions. In conclusion, the combination of DBT and Airflow has several advantages. First of all, we will have a friendly data discovery environment for data users. People could have a clear sense of the relations between a bunch of data sources in our data warehouse. Also, we could use DBT as a source controller for all the data models. Here is another benefit to it. We could deploy the data models with service account instead of personal accounts in cloud platform. Therefore, we could have a better management of the permissions of these service accounts. Both DBT and Airflow are open sources. In DBT, we could use user-defined function to build our own tests. Also, for Airflow, if the current operator cannot be satisfied, we could integrate the best operator with a more functional operator to suit into our infrastructure. They give us a more extensible developing environment. What's more, it breaks the wall between data and the model. Before, if we want to ensure the data quality, we need to check before we use it for every pipeline. However, with DBT and Airflow, we could see the dependency of the quality checks. One check could benefit many pipelines. 
Therefore, we could get the reusable and the reliable features for our machine learning or deep learning pipelines. It vastly accelerates the model development. Yeah, and this is the end of the presentation. I will start to answer the questions. Yes, it's open source. We also use Lucas for the data modeling. So for me, it's question, according to the DAG, do you train a new model every time you want to do a prediction? It depends case by case. So for, for some of the like the offline jobs, we do train it every time before we do the prediction. And for the other jobs, for the large tax, tasks, we use checkpoints. In case we, can use, we cannot use cloud, I wonder if it is possible to use DBT and the, the process pipelines airflow for in-house data pipeline. Yes, you, you do, you could. What is the IO efficiency and uh, the IO efficiency of DBT and also for the DBT? I haven't think about this question before, but I think because of the data is already, so DBT only deal with the data already in the data warehouse. So I don't think we will like care about it a lot. What's the personal effort? So before, I think it's so as a data scientist, uh, especially if you are working in a large organization, you will face a lot of like blockers when you initialize your project. You don't know where the data come from and where the like the compo the data components come like join together. What's the business logic beside inside it? So, but with DBT and also the Airflow, we could say that there are uh, several semantic layers for the for the data, so we could read those data and the link to the uh, link to the person if we still have the question of the data and also re the relationships. So I think it's mostly reduced my time on um, spending on the data discovery. And also, I think the other like the key point of the the current city setting is that it's like it's like largely like we could build the, the so before when I build the, the machine learning pipelines I need to check the data qualities at the beginning for every pipeline but for now I think with the combo we could like once the data is ready we could like trigger we could submit some like the we could public message to the pop up topic and then the sub subscriber for us for is for us is the machine learning pipeline could be triggered with this information yeah i think i answered all the questions I'll wait one more minute for any other questions then thanks for joining the session today enjoying the rest of the week bye oh there are two more questions uh can you give an example of the model run what, what do you mean the data model or the machine learning model or the projects or the so we use this combo to do some like the chart model prediction and also we estimate the customer lifetime value and there are so many more so this is a new combo and the, this um so for this combination is not be applied to the whole group but we are we have planned to to migrate to this setting for other projects yeah, welcome. How does the DBT handle the data in terms of modeling? So we use Airflow to schedule to schedule the job to run the DBT jobs. So it's automated. So we usually store our image and also the checkpoints and also the train the models to the GCS buckets and we also use like the so for every trained model it would be stored in the GCS buckets. And for the other, I'm not sure I understand the version of versions of machine learning models correctly, but we do have the GitLab repository for different machine learning models. Do you know how does the DBT compares to other GPU? Are they serving the same? Purpose? I actually do not think they are serving the same purpose. So I think DBT is more like to do some the some like the quality checks and also the visualization to show the data component and for leverage and beam. I assume that is uh, good for like the in-house transformation. 
And uh, so I think the key difference of DBT and Dimash Beam is that DBT use SQL. Yeah, I think we could end this session. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy the, the rest of the week. Bye-bye.